Okay, now we're starting in on the um, section C of the test, which gets into the free response questions. So you have to set up all the formulas and find the answer and get the units right all on your own. There's no multiple choice to choose from. So um, a student produced various elongations of a spring by applying a series of forces to the spring. The graph below represents the relationship between the applied force and the elongation of the spring. So the first thing they want you to do is determine the spring constant. So what is the spring constant? Well, remember the formula for um, for a spring. The force on a spring is equal to the spring constant times the displacement. Sometimes this is written as delta x, and sometimes they put a negative out in front of here because the force exerted is in the opposite direction of the displacement, but I'm not going to get into that for this problem. We don't really need to. The key thing to remember here is that if we know the force that was applied to the spring and the corresponding elongation, which we do because he did this experiment many times, so every point on this line represents an ordered pair where the x-coordinate is the elongation and the y-coordinate is the force that caused that elongation and we can find the spring constant. And if a spring constant is a linear relationship like this, then it doesn't matter for that spring how much or how little you stretch it or um, compress it. It's a linear relationship, so spring constant will always be the same no matter what point we pick. So I'm going to pick this point, and again, this selection is arbitrary, and I want to find k, so let's solve this thing for k. That's the spring constant. We'll divide both sides by x. We'll get the spring force over the displacement. So for that arbitrary point that I picked, the force that was applied was 4 newtons, and the elongation that was observed was 0.2 meters. So if you put that into your calculator, you'll get 20 newtons per meter. And that is the answer to the first part, so that's done, 20 newtons per meter. So that's the, just remember that's the units of a spring constant. It's newtons per meter. And if I picked some other point on here, suppose I had picked 8, and then it would be divided by 0.4, and it would still be 20 newtons per meter. So that's why it's important that this relationship be a straight line. Now they want us to calculate the energy stored in the spring when the elongation is 0.3 meters. So it's either been stretched or compressed by 0.3 meters, and now that, that spring is storing energy, potential energy. So there's another formula you'll find on your equation sheet. The potential energy of a spring is equal to 1 half kx squared. And we now know k because we just went and found it. And that doesn't change because it's the, it is the spring constant for this spring. And they're telling us that the elongation is 0.3 meters. So we should be able to find the potential energy of the spring. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So we have 1 half, 20 newtons per meter. and 0.3 meters of elongation that's being squared. So let's, well actually I did this in my calculator and I got 0.9. And now what are the units? We have newtons per meter times meters squared. So let's work that out down here. Newtons per meter, and that's times meters squared. So one of the meters in the numerator cancels out with this meter in the denominator, and we end up with newtons times meters. And now what is a newton meter? that's the same as a joule which we expect because joules are the units of energy so 0.9 joules and that is the answer to this part and that's it